It was <clears throat> interesting and, and timely, a woman I saw in the news who was um, talking about the um, situation with domestic violence escalating uh, because of coronavirus and um, it made me, and what she was emphasizing in part of her perspective was that men who are, and I, you know, who are just rattled with this idea of not being able to get out and, and do sports or anything that they can, you know, apply their aggression uh, conditionally in, in a civilized fashion. Now their skin is crawling and the mind is exploding. And it's, you know, very difficult, except what I would say in that is that the energy from the consternation, if you can get in a mental state, just becomes energy. And then you can use that same energy to amplify your plasticity. And in many ways, maybe that's, you know, ultimately the only way out. It's like being uh, a prisoner in, in that sense. You're a prisoner within a field of stimulus opportunity. And if you don't address the complexity behind whatever motivates you, whatever, you know, turns you on, gets you up in the morning, uh, that, that, that is crucial, not only to, uh, you know, well, it's crucial to everything. It's crucial to your immune system. And a lot of what, what needs to happen here is a stimulus of the immune system, which LSD could potentially provide. Uh, you know, maybe some sort of metabolic uh, prophylactic or, but, but I was thinking of it more in terms of dissociating one from the entanglement and the embeddedness of, of normal reality and escalating certain features of consciousness that, that are normally suppressed within, um, you know, as in the book, The Spiritual Brain, where they talk about how you can adjust your emotions to respond to you know, a sad movie or something. That's what we do collectively. We've adjusted our emotions and things like, uh, um, you know, books like Death of the, of the Liberal Class have documented uh, what, what's happened to us. Uh, everything has moved towards the right. And the discipline on the right uh, is that left brain cognitive box axiomatic only to itself and not to moral morontification or uh, and certainly not open to analogy of a more complex sort um, you know beyond the basic range of symbols uh, because of where and, and Einstein says in this book and I can't find it but he talks about if you don't still have that feeling of mysticism about you you are as good as dead already and I think that the population within you know the reality of the social structure uh, makes you know the guinea pig civilization experiment all these guinea pigs are, are uh, you know competing with one another and you know burning the candle at both ends and other books uh, sort of change or die uh, I haven't actually read this except for parts of it, um, but it's a message, change or die. Maybe that's where we were in a, you know, an age of digital barbarism, where we haven't uh, gone to the affective domain at all. We, we've, you know, through a series of accidents, really, uh, in the history of the birth of some lectures, I'm watching on the birth of the modern mind, how, you know, things trickle through um, Francis Drake, not Francis Drake, um, Francis Bacon, close enough. Uh, same name as the painter, but the, the one who started the whole empirical movement and then that distills into nature uh, as seen, understood through a vista of mathematics. And that coins the reality not only in the productive applicative uh, consciousness, uh, but also eclipses anything that, that might happen in the right brain. Uh, so in this, uh, in this book, refers to the research of how we compress, um, well that's what I'm saying, compressing the, 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 the sort of chambers of reason into what establishes your frontal cortex and that establishes what sort of brain you have, 
by the way you've grown up and adjusted your emotional reality so that you don't overreact or underreact and sometimes it's a tightrope between uh, two realms. Um, I want to point out I think Deepak Chopra was had a uh, meditation on uh, sort of worldwide uh, connectedness and, and the internet went down. It, it's, you know, religion can be a hard sell. Uh, think of Peter who denied Christ three times in, in the one night before the cock crowed and think of, uh, you know, Doubting Thomas. These are people who knew Jesus firsthand. And this whole complicated arrangement between what religion stands for and what, you know, spiritual belief stands for and it all boils down to the major thinkers and the major uh, to to the truth, the life, and the way. Uh, the truth, the life, and the way. Um, and you can sort of almost interchange those things because truth is ever evolving. One's subjectivity is ever evolving, ever trying to evolve, knowing you know the obstacles of the embedded mind. And again, I think I mentioned these books, but I don't think I held them up to the camera. Um, Self-healing, Mir Schneider. Uh, these are important. I guess this was the one I this one I read. Uh, added meaning to to my healing because in 2011 I had a CAT scan and MRI saying that I needed the same surgery that I had had in '92. Uh, same doctor, uh, neurosurgeon, uh, Dr. Fazel at Sunnybrook. And my first surgery had gone great, and I don't know why I swelled up with apprehension about this next surgery. I was lucky to even get in queue to be considered possible. Uh, and, and then I backed away from it, got off the hydromorphine stuff, and I've been on a long time, and sort of tried to reincarnate myself. And then with this hernia thing, having to lose weight, now paring down this notion in this uh, idea of self and, and learning that, you know, there's so much neurology. Uh, you want to go to your extremity. You want to plasticize the energy going into your toes and your fingers and you want to do that in a, in a way that, that is profound. Anyways, I want to just sort of solemnly, we went, uh, I had a need of an emergency dental appointment. Uh, we were shopping today, you know, I was sort of suffused with this coronavirus uh, thing, big lineups around most stores. We happened to hit a giant tiger just at the right time. And, uh, you know, it, it's profound walking around. And, and it is easy to get down. And, and I think, you know, if, if one uses plasticity or cannabis or... Uh, something to engage a different mindset, migrate the firing and wiring to a different place in the brain, take this, you know, prisoner of war status as an epiphany like, like uh, Malcolm X did, trying to construct your own mind and I'll continue the mind structuring things. I thought with, with Easter coming up and all, uh, this whole notion of, of religion and spiritual belief, um, one, one uh, has every right to be somewhat demoralized by the spiritual uh, geography uh, these days. And even those who are voicing uh, calm uh, spiritual navigation. At any rate, we came home today from shopping. Uh, yesterday we had to go to the dentist. Hopefully now we're, we're home for two to three weeks without having to go out. And uh, came home. And I just flipping through the channels, and I came to this movie, Mercy, that I didn't know about, Colin Firth and Rachel Weisz. I, you know, I'd read this book back, you know, as a teenager, A Strange Voyage of Donald Crowhurst, and it impacted me very deeply because it suggested to me that away from the neurological parameters of, of normal infested reality, the human being evolves in a totally different, different fashion. And he was at sea by himself 247 days. Um, his wife uh, and himself, uh, you know, very much in love, four kids. Uh, he had go gotten thrown out of the army, I think, for riding his motorcycle through the barracks and out of the Air Force for driving his plane through um, uh, a bridge, under a bridge, London Bridge or something. 
And then uh, he invented this thing, uh, and he wanted to, you know, sail around the world. That would give him some advertising for this electron find early GPS. Uh, the first thing that you could push a button and get your longitude, latitude. And as he's on there 247 days, and eventually potentially slips off the boat or commits suicide. Uh, but a very, you know cathartic movie for me to see the ending of, uh, particularly today, uh, instilling in me, you know, the, this fear uh, of this whole life death parameter uh, and, and that we find ourselves in, in a peculiar uh, situation. And I believe if you got, you know, paper, draw, sketch, jot down ideas, do creative, sporadically creative things, uh, entertain the mind as you engage the mind and give it depth at the same time so that coming out of this cocoon uh, one can be be the butterfly and uh, reading Donald Crowhurst from his <clears throat> logbook he, he was you know mathematician and uh, a computer guy the very first wave and and on this voyage he starts writing poetry he says and you'll find time to think again as you never find time ashore. Films of prejudice, expediency, and strain wash from my dusty eyes once more, revealing unwelcome detail and the lost horizon of that sharp-eyed childhood day before you learnt to blur the edges of your vision and trudge man's compromising way. Okay, and one more. Uh, the movie I said was called Mercy. I didn't see the whole thing. I'll, I'll obviously keep my eyes out for it. Um, but brought back a flood of, of memories in, in me establishing literally uh, a compass in terms of where, uh, you know, I needed to navigate. Uh, if I was going to be successful in literally becoming myself, uh, so here's another one from Donald Crowhurst. I will only resign this game if you will agree that on the next occasion that this game is played, it will be played according to the rules that are devised by my great God, who has revealed at last to his son not only the exact nature of the reason for games, but has also revealed the truth of the way of the ending of the next game that it is finished it is finished it is the mercy uh, there's another one here where he has sort of mathematical calculations embodied in in the poem uh, but the point is that without the social graphs the demographic the uh, economic backdrop the uh, guns, germs, and steel that has thrust us into this situation where this sort of digital barbarism is sort of percolating under the, the you know, because we, we need to recognize our complexity because the mind, a hundred thousand, what is it, a hundred thousand billion neurons, uh, I haven't said that for a long time, so sort of slipping. Uh, but at any rate, this very complex manifestation within the orchestration of the plasticity, how fluid the brain is, how much like a rainforest, the dendrites and the axons, and how negotiated and how precise the myelinated traffic is going to be in terms of how you fire and wire and, uh, your brain and how you manifest you know, from that beyond this narrowing of what the frontal cortex has done in terms of this very linear axiomatic self-replicating uh, uh, reality and um, the confusion that, that we are all undergoing um, is an assault, a tangible assault. Um, I feel it, I feel it in my body, you know, the first thing that I, you know, you, you think uh, the initiation of some sort of pain and, you know, the migrating uh, neurons uh, leap into to action. So one has to school the brain, uh, I believe, yeah, in shutting the brain down in terms of meditation, but beyond that, 
of creating a superstructure for your own mind. And I will get back to the, the structuring process of, of the mind. What are what is are the axes on which you know your mind's going to orbit? And how are you integrating that in terms with your physical nature, your very physical prowess, your very hope uh, and being of uh, being a, a stronger, evolving forward, uh, creative thing, rather than having these filaments in the brain, you know, dry up, you know, because there's just not enough innervation in the psyche uh, for, you know, the armies of the the Walking Dead. You know, who who rush in slow motion like the bull towards a matador's uh, red cape uh, into some uncertain future, with the focus uh, relative to the optics that, that are entirely you know staged and and generated by a society that needs to come to grips with itself. No one could imagine the world coming to a screeching halt. You know, with all the repercussive uh, damage that 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 that. Uh, entails uh, a lot of what people are doing, particularly, uh, you know, they're suggesting that Easter Sunday is when, you know, one of these peaks is going to be at its apex, and maybe that's, you know, something that religious people should take note of. Uh, you know, the symbolism, the whole criteria it doesn't come down to some candlesticks in, in the church or some you know, mesmerizing, uh, splendorific thing. Uh, you know, I think of Larry Cohen's song, Hallelujah. You know, it's not, you know, it's a broken hallelujah. You know, at, at the very best, it's a broken. But the crack, as Leonard would also say, in the whole shebang, is the very thing that lets, lets the light in. And, and that can, you know, that illumination can spread because ideas can spread, consciousness can spread, collective unconsciousness can try to literally redeem itself. Uh, you know, the, the incorrigibility and for sure uh, with kids uh, invite as much, you know, possible mind growth as, as one can engineer with limited circumstances. Think of, you know, Anne Frank. I, you know, one of the first plays I ever acted in was, oh, I was Mr. Crawler and Anne Frank. When the sun, no, Mr. Crawler always comes when the sun begins to shine or vice versa it was my cue to come on stage. But there, Anne Frank and, and letting the imagination go, because this is a very systemically underrated thing, uh, the imagination, and how that contributes to direct root to neurogenesis, direct innervation of neuroplasticity. So that your firing and wiring becomes more, you know, part of a, an overall uh, growth principle, and uh, you know, for guys who are exercising, uh, you know, trying to break any pattern, don't create a, I would say, at any rate for the plasticity of the brain, don't fall into a, a direct routine. Refute your pattern, uh, so that you ignite. It's like in um, the diving bell and the butterfly, um, the guy who is locked in syndrome very courageously writing his, his you know, autobiography uh, to try to settle the score, to try to redeem uh, himself of some people he overlooked and, and so on. But with locked-in syndrome, he can only move one eye and has to dictate, uh, you know, everything letter by letter in, in what he's writing. And um, that discombobulation or you know, Jesus is 40 days in the desert, or, you know, Mohammed deciding he's not going to turn, he's not going to keep fighting, he's going to, you know, navigate peace and solidarity. And a lot of times solidarity issues become issues that are triumphant in one age and that are compromising in another age. Uh, and that seems to be uh, part of, of what's, what's up. And so, so in terms of encouragement, Amazon, I think, has some free audio books. Uh, as much as you can cohere your ideas, uh, that's what I'm trying to structure. Uh, and the other podcast is trying to develop a perspective on the male mind and the female mind that, that's coming up. Uh, how, how that goes from, uh, you know, from Dangerous Minds to Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf to Hannah Arendt to, you know, the, the, the oh, and the Mona Lisa smile. 
uh, most of all, that characterization. Beautifully done uh, um, of, of the American housewife because in a patriarchy, men want their women at home and their mistresses on the stage. And that dichotomy has produced a lot of angst, domestic angst, and so on. So for those uh, in a situation, and this is the male, you know, this domestic abuse thing, I, I would bet 90% of it, as usually is the case, would be male-oriented, this man, you know, man-bear, bear cave, uh, ideation of a uh, simple pronouncement of very barbaric <clears throat> uncivilized qualities and actually thinking that that civilized qualities in some way are are just what's politically uh, correct but uh, Einstein had to take a lot of political flack and and yet he he got to this idea about this cult of efficiency and, and how one bears down on that with the mind and the application of the mind and how it constructs the mind and how there's a very different mindset, a mystical mindset that can imagine a body moving at the speed of light or two elevators falling at the same time because it's part of the visionary process, the mirroring process and particularly with mirror neurons, because it embodies so much in terms of units, large units, complex units, particularly interpersonal uh, units in terms of uh, person to personhood. And uh, so I think that's it. Uh, yeah, Donald Crowhurst uh, sailing down uh, the African coast uh, up. South America has to put some plywood on his boat, uh, get it back in the water, get stranded in the Saragossa Sea for a while. Uh, but to me, a very courageous, introspective journey <clears throat> for a man uh, who had many uh, attributes. And he spent 247 days at sea alone. Okay, so happy Easter. Um, Time to plumb the depths of one's spiritual truth and to imagine what that might be because you need your imagination, you need everything, all your resourcefulness to come to an appreciation because you have to get this, you know, you have to get this right. Because the other thing is to go, give over to some pathology that's going to spin your wheels in a certain direction, which could be uh, an out-of-control direction, and we all feel the threat of, you know, that out-of-controlness in terms of the invisible uh, enemy. Okay, thank you.